we have a sequence and we have to find out if the sequence always increases, always decreases, or if it's not monotonic at all, we also have to find out if it's bounded or not. So let's go ahead and try to find out if it's always increasing or always decreasing, or neither. The way we do that is by taking the derivative. So let's just take the derivative of this. The 3 here is going to go away when you take its derivative. Then you're left with this to work with, negative 2n e to the negative n. You have a product. When you have a product like this, remember, and you take a derivative, you do the derivative of this times the normal version of this plus the normal version of this times the derivative of this one. So here we get negative 2e to the negative n, and we're adding negative 2n. You bring in the negative from over there, this becomes a plus e to the negative n. Um, so now we can factor out uh, uh, 2e to the negative n. We've got 1 minus n. One my one mm, negative one plus n. There you go. Negative one plus n. Now that we have this, our next thing is to ask, okay, we have the derivative. Is it always increasing or always decreasing? Well we have an exponent here which is negative. When you have a negative exponent, that means this is in the denominator. So if you have something in the denominator, if this is in the denominator, then of course it's always going to decrease because this keeps going higher and higher and higher and you're always dividing by that number. And over here, in top, you have you have something which is just it, it, it's just integers. It's just it goes zero, one, two, three, four, no matter what you plug in. And here you're constantly increasing the value of e. You're dividing by that, so it's always going to be decreasing, right? It's always going to be decreasing, no matter what. So. Our next question, if it's always decreasing, as we've proved, is, is it bounded? Is this thing bounded? Let me write the decreasing. Decreasing because of the derivative. Is it bounded? So let's plug in the first term of a sequence, which is always 1. If you plug in the first term of the sequence, and to here you get 3 minus 2 times 1 e to the negative 1. So this would give you 3 minus, and then you have 2 over e. So that seems to be your first term. We know it's always going to be decreasing. It's always going to, because we just showed that, it's always going to go beneath that. It's never going to go above that. But we still have to check if it's bounded all the way at the other side. All the way at the other side means at infinity. When you take the limit as n approaches infinity, does that converge or diverge? Because it may yet still be unbounded if it diverges. So we plug in infinity, we've got 3 minus 2 n e to the negative n. The 3 doesn't matter, so we, we've got the limit as n approaches infinity of negative 2n e to the negative n, which is the same thing as the limit as n approaches infinity of negative 2n over e to the n. And we've got infinity in the numerator, infinity in the denominator. We can apply L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule tells us that we could take the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator when we have infinity over infinity, which we do, or when we have 0 over 0. So let's take 
let's take that derivative, and we have negative 2 over e to the n. Now we plug in infinity, and what happens? That goes to 0. That absolutely goes to 0, because you're dividing some number by infinity. You plug in infinity in the exponent of e, and that goes to infinity. So we have converges to 0. It does converge to 0, which means it does have a lower bound. That's its upper bound, that's its lower bound. That means this is a decreasing bounded function, a bounded uh, sequence.